Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to go through one of the processes of separating a mixture. And that is, of course, one of the basic ones of filtration. And so I just have a very simple setup. We got a ring stand, we got a beaker below, and I got filter paper. And in the yellow, we have the material that we made in a previous demonstration, which is the lead compound or lead iodide that was made in the double replacement. And so you're going to hear me, it might sound a little bit differently as I switch. And so I have this material, it's a solid precipitate and we don't want to just dump it down the drain but I also don't want to just you know let it sit here forever because if I let it sit for a while it will settle down to the bottom we have again a solid product it's heavy and it will settle out over time we can just basically start to pour it into our filter paper and our filter paper should be able to take most of it out now depending on the severity uh, you know and how well the filter paper is made there may be some holes So I'm already looking and seeing that I'm getting a lot of yellow at the mm -hmm. bottom And so this might not be the best filter paper to use so I might have to do a double run and or uh, Use a thicker material and so I'm actually gonna put another smaller one underneath it quick Just to see if we can catch a little of this extra material and prevent it from going But eventually it will all start to leak out mm -hmm. and we will also see some of the solid material at the end and so I'm gonna pour as much as I can in there, but we'll see in both scenarios that I do have some yellow material left over. And so again, I need to rinse through and I have to keep pouring, rinse through, pour, rinse through, pour. And at the end, I'm gonna have a bunch of yellow material at the very end. And what we can do is appropriately, uh, you know, let it dry up and then I can bag it in a plastic baggie. And then we have appropriate people who will come and will actually, uh, basically disseminate and or disperse of it appropriately so it's not getting into the water supply and not getting into you know the food chains or not getting into the garbage and burnt and into the air that we breathe and so filtering of course is one of the best methods this is slowing down a little bit we see that it's a little bit clear coming down out of the dripping um, at least from my perspective that's what I'm seeing and so I'm gonna switch out beakers here we're doing this live in the lab and I'm gonna just switch out beakers. And if you notice again, I got a little yellow. Let's see if I can put it at the right angle here. And there we go. So it's, it's clearer than what the originals were, but again, I still have some yellow in it. So that means there's gonna be some particulate solids in there. And so I'm gonna pour this back in. We're gonna kind of mix back and forth because I have all these other materials that are left over that still have extra lead in them. Now, we're never 100% going to be able to remove everything, and that's unfortunate in the, in the science world, but we try to do as best we can, and so we continue to rinse, and I'm gonna rinse and kinda spray these. I just have regular tap water here because it doesn't really matter the kind of water, you're just filtering it through anyway. But we wanna try to recover as much as we can just to try to keep as much out of the, uh, you know, out of the system, out of the water supply, again, out of the groundwater, out of the air. If this were to go to an incinerator, or the garbage, they might just take it and burn all the garbage, and then you know you have uh, lead in the air. And so I still have a slight yellowness to these, and so we're just gonna try to loosen up as much as we can without spilling it like I just did, but I'll wipe that up. Just trying to get as much as we can loosened off, get those consolidated, and with the rest, what I'll often do is I'll dry with a paper towel, and once I have the paper towel, I will actually keep the paper towel in with the disposable material inside a plastic bag just so that we try to reduce as much. I'll actually wipe out uh, with the paper. So for example, if we take this little paper towel here, and I'll show you a perfect example. If I take this and actually wipe through, we'll actually see that there is a little yellow on that paper towel. And I apologize for the noise in the background if you're hearing that. We're doing a little construction at the school that I work at. And so what I'll do again, like I said, I will take this filter when it's done and I will take the material and I will take the excess paper and I will label it as lead iodide. We wanna make sure that the people that are disposing of it are safe and they know what they're having in front of them and they don't come into any other contaminants that might bother them or might affect them or that they could get sick with. And so we're just gonna to continue to wipe it all down, try to get as much as we can. The water at the bottom is a lot clearer than the other one was. We're gonna zoom in here. We bear with me. That's a lot clearer than what it was before. The one that I showed you a few minutes ago was quite yellow still. 
and the filtering process will come through here and we'll actually see that it is capturing all the yellow and over time this will continue to settle out and we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes because it's gonna take a while to get that excess water especially because I put that second layer of filter paper so that's kind of like a little hack if you don't seem to have your materials working correctly in the first place sorry for my finger there if they're not working correctly in the first place you might want to go in and add yourself a second set of filter paper in there or you could just go through and you'd have to start again notice I had to re-pour again what I might do with this it is still slightly yellow what I might do is uh, just let it evaporate over you know a couple days just to see what else we get I could do it another run through if I really wanted to through other filter paper but again the filter paper isn't going to be hundred percent perfect it's usually for uh, you know the, the filter paper types that we have maybe in a, a chemistry lab in the high school setting might not be the top quality grade is what you would see in a you know a specific lab for you know uh, you know a billion dollar industry and so you know some of these might be a little more porous but for the name you know for the sake of what we're doing they are serving their purpose so again filtration is one of the main ways to separate and pull out solid components especially in a precipitate that forms of a double replacement excuse me a double replacement reaction like we saw in the previous video between lead nitrate and potassium iodide so this has been mr gardner hopefully you found something new and beneficial that you can use in your future chemistry classes take care